Are you ready to make some faux desserts for your Easter decor? Stick around and meet me in the kitchen. That's exactly what we're doing today. Okay. I started this pie at Christmas, okay? And you're going to see footage of me starting this at Christmas. What happened was I had so much going on at Christmas and so many DIYs that I put this on the back burner knowing I was going to do it for Easter. So if you're wondering why you're seeing Christmas in the beginning of this video, now you know. You're right, you got it. I'm making a pie, a chocolate pie for my Christmas faux goodies. Okay guys, what I'm gonna do, I don't have a lot of plaster of Paris left and it is raining cats and dogs out. Woohoo! I am so excited about that. But I cannot go out and get more plaster of Paris right now, so I think I, am going to have almost enough to fill up my pie tin, okay? But not quite. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take a plastic bag, okay? And I'm gonna put it down in the pan. Then I'm going to take a piece of our wonderful cereal box and I'm going to make a circle to fit in here so when I pour the plaster of Paris it'll fill it okay because believe it or not just this deep will probably take four cups of plaster of Paris and I from feeling it and I've done this so long now I can tell I've probably got two cups maybe two and a half but not enough to put four cups okay so now what I'm gonna do I'm just going to trace around, okay, my family loves chocolate pie, okay, chocolate cream pie, you know, with whipped cream on top, I like the lemon meringue, and I think I'm the only one in the family that does, the rest of them all like chocolate, not that I don't like chocolate, don't get me wrong, but it's an inexpensive, but if you went out to buy this, I guarantee you, you would pay a lot of money. At least 40 bucks, 40 or $50. Faux food that's made is expensive. Let's see, I'll probably have to cut this down. Yeah, because it's going to be on top. Okay, so what I did is I had to keep cutting this down a little bit. So I have the plastic bag. And keep, when you go to the grocery store, if you do faux food or whatever, Keep the plastic bags that you put your produce in, okay? So I have that in the pie pan, and then I'm gonna lay this on top, okay? Because I'll be able to pour enough to where it will work on this. And I have a little extra, I'll pour it into another candy mold. But for now, what I have to do, now that I have that taken care of, before I pour the plaster, Paris, I've got to make my, uh, I've got to make my crust. Now I could use bread dough, but I'd rather use the clay with this. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of this out and flatten it a little bit. And I'm not even going to use a, uh, any kind of a rolling pin. I'm not going to need to. You'll see why. So let's take this out for now. And I'm going to bring the crust about down to here. Okay, so it'll be up here, but about to there. So the plaster Paris is going to be over it. Because you don't want the crust just meeting. Because if you don't get it completely covered, it's going to look funny. So let's get out some clay. I'm pressing it down just with my hand. And if you want, you can roll it out. It's totally up to you. But I'm going to get this to the thickness that I want, and then I'll bring you back as I'm putting it around. Okay, so I just got it out to where I want it. Up. 
And I'm just going to cut and then I'm going to take it and I'm just going to put it, like I said, just around here. See where I have it down here a little bit? And then I'm just going to pinch it. And I'm just going to keep doing this all the way around the pie tin until I have the crust the way I want it. Okay. So when this dries, I'll bring it back, we'll paint the crust, and then we'll pour our chocolate pie. Okay, guys, I'm back. The clay is dry. Not going to paint it yet. I'll do that when I'm done pouring, okay? So I'm going to get my plaster of Paris ready. Have my container. This is an old bowl. So I'm going to get my cold water, one cup of cold water, put my plaster of Paris in it, whisk it around, and I'll be back. Okay, guys, the pie is ready. The, what I mean is the crust. It's dried. And I have my plastic bag that I'm going to put in there. I have my plaster of Paris with the water poured, and I'm just whisking it. And I prefer using a whisk. To me, it gets it better, the clumps and everything. Okay, so I'm going to let that sit for a minute. Not long. You don't want it to be long, okay? And if you remember, like I, I told you, I'm putting this in there. This little plastic bag. Okay, so here we go. And even with the cardboard, it's still not going to meet the crust. So that means I'm going to have to do another amount. So let's see what I can do. It didn't go all the way up, but I'm going to fake it and I'm going to move it around to the crust. That'll be good enough once it's painted. You'll see when I'm done. Okay, it's poured. And now I'm going to wait for it to dry, and then we will paint it and put some whipped cream on it, and we will... Okay, so before I put this into the um, pastry bags, this is for my new subscribers. When I do my spackle, making my frosting for my faux desserts, I always use the lightweight spackle, okay? Daps, fast and final, lightweight, not regular, lightweight. Has to be lightweight for it to look real. So what we're going to do is I'm going to make the crust for these two slices for the chocolate pie and the and this silicone mold I got through Amazon. I wanted to show you this so if this happens to you you don't get all nervous. Do you see where it's cracked here? You don't need to worry about that. All I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with a little bit of the spackle and I'm just going to spackle in these little cracks. I'm not going to do that on I'm not going to do this on camera. It's going to take too much time. I'll show you one okay one crack and then I'll go off camera and then we will come back as I get ready to start painting. Okay so what I did and I didn't come back I forgot to come back on camera to show you, you guys. I just filled in the little cracks right here. Okay, right there. So that's all I did, and I just filled it in with regular spackle. I didn't use my lightweight for that. I just used my regular, and I see a little bit right there. So let's... There you go. 
All right, I'm going to let that dry. I'll be back in a minute, and we're going to roll out our crust. We're going to roll out our crust for the chocolate pie slices. Everybody, we are ready to paint our pie and our pie slices. I have our spackle, a.k.a. whipped cream, in the pastry bag, twisted tight to keep it moist. You can see all the cracks now are gone from the pie. I've got my paint brushes, my paint, and my pie is on my Lazy Susan. It's just easier that way. Let's see, the paints I have, this is just a glaze that I've had for like 20 years, so I don't think you'd ever find it. But I have the Burnt Umber, because my chocolate pies, when I make them, they're very dark chocolate, because I use the dark chocolate. And for the crust, I'm going to use the Craft Smart, and this is soft butter, dark chocolate, and classic caramel. That's going to be the crust. I'm mixing these. So you'll just have to find the groove or whatever color you think you might like and see which you like best. Okay? And then the pie itself will be the burnt umber. Same with the pie slices. Alright, so let's get... And I just have this lid because I'll put my paint on that and it'll act like a palette. Okay? And I need it over here. You don't need to see the paint on there. So, okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I might, you know, I might just use the caramel as far as the caramel and the dark chocolate for the uh, crust. Not sure about the soft butter. All right, so I think I'll start out just with caramel. And again, when you find your uh, color, whatever you're happy with, go for it. Maybe I will add a little bit of this yellow. You see what I mean? It's just a matter of. Uh, trial and error actually unless you can find a paint that you think wow that looks just like a crust would be and this air dry clay soaks up the paint like nobody's business I'll tell you And what you could do also is you could take a little bit of water, just a tiny bit, okay? Actually, the water uh, helps kind of uh, lighten it up a little bit, if you will. And actually, when you make a pie, I don't know about you, but the crust, if you get it a golden brown, just looks just about like this. And if I don't use the dark brown, I'll just put it back in to the bottle. Now, you're noticing that I'm doing the crust first, because for me, it's a lot easier to come in with that dark brown and not hit too much of the crust. Whereas if I had the brown already and hitting my crust, see here, I just have, for myself, now you might have a real, I mean a hand that's just like so steady that you could do that, but I prefer doing this first. I'm just mixing a little bit of that caramel and that uh, soft butter yellow together. See there? And don't forget to do this side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue to paint the rest of this and then I'll come back and then we'll paint the actual pie. So now what we're going to do, I'm going to let that uh, crust dry on that pie. And I'm going to come in, and we're going to just paint.
the crust on our slices just exactly the same way. Okay? These turned out really good. I have a lot of ideas uh, for that silicone mold. You can do a lot with that. You see why I'm doing the crust first? Because if I get on to the actual pie itself, it's not going to matter because the color that I'm uh, doing the pie is a lot darker. So it doesn't matter. You want to get your pie down here, your crust, I mean. Make sure to get way down into the crust. You know what I mean? You don't want to see any uh, light. A little bit of my crust came off here, so it's no big deal. I'll just put it back there. I could have, been, I could have went a little bit thicker on the actual bottom of the pie crust, but it's not a big deal. A lot of other things to worry about in life than thin crust. If it doesn't stay on, it doesn't stay on. That's no big deal to me. Again, this is for my use. If I was making it as a gift, it'd be a different story. But since it's for me, and really it's for the purpose of showing you as well how to do it. So as long as I can get the gist of how to make this gets across to you, then I've done my job. Okay, I'm going to finish this, and then I'll be back as soon as we start to paint the pie. Alright, so let's get going now on the actual pie part. Every time I make one of these faux desserts, it always makes me want to make the real thing. <laughs> okay, and this is the Folk Art Again Burnt Umber. Now you could use a um, uh, sponge brush. If And I'm going to get almost to the edge, and then when I get to the edge, I'm going to use a smaller brush. I'm just using this big brush because it gets it all over quicker. But this brush is kind of funky. I've had it for a long, long time, and uh, I just don't trust it right against the, the edge. And this is what's nice about the Lazy Susan, because you can just turn the Lazy Susan. You know what I mean? And I got the Lazy Susan from uh, Hobby Lobby in the cake department. And I'm deliberately leaving kind of a thick, well, not thick, thick, but in other words, I'm not trying to paint it smooth and I left the uh, plaster of Paris kind of um, oh I don't know bumpy if you will because that really is how at least for my chocolate pies maybe they're not supposed to be but <laughs> they're not completely smooth well at least in my house they're not Like I said, the detail work I will do. The detail work I'll use a uh, smaller brush. All right, so for the detail work, I'm going to go off camera. 
okay? And then I'll be back when I'm done with that and we'll start the slices. Okay, so now we have the chocolate done. Now I'm going to let it dry and then I'm going to antique it. When you antique these faux foods, a lot of them, no, I mean, you're not going to do cupcakes and stuff like that. But pies, when you antique like the crust, it just, it adds another dimension and it makes it look even more real, okay? So what I'm going to do now, like I said, I'm going to let this dry. And we're going to go on with the pie slices. Okay, so here's the clay, and this is just Crayola air dry clay. Got it at Hobby Lobby, $6.99. I used my 40% off coupon. So I'm taking a ball, just, and when I'm doing my faux foods, I always just envision this as food, right? So I'm, I'm taking the flour mixture, AKA clay. Okay, I'm gonna put it on a piece of wax paper and then cover it with another piece, okay? Now I'm just gonna roll it out, and this is slipping a little bit, so I'm just gonna do it this way. I'm just gonna roll, roll, roll until I get the thinness that I want, okay? Then I'm gonna come back, and I'll bring you with me when I put the slices on top to get the size I want, okay? So I'm gonna roll this out. When I'm done with that, I'll be back. Okay, so I have the pie slices out of the silicone mold and now I'm going to place them about where I think I want them onto the clay. Look how nice that is guys. And I won't use this side, I'll use this side. But I really, really like that mold. Okay, so now I'm going to just kind of press it down in so I have something to go off of to cut. Now I'm going to come out here further, if you can see that, and because I want to bring that, I want to bring this clay up onto the edge of the pie like it's been cut with the crust on it. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm just cutting now around the pie like you would so it looks like the crust is underneath it and the part more that I'm concerned with than even underneath is how it looks when it's up here onto the pie okay so let's get rid of this part for now and when you're using your air dry clay, make sure you put it right back into the container, the part you're not using like this right now. Even if you need more, it will dry out and then you're not going to be able to use it. So I always put it back and make sure the lid's on tight. Okay. want to get rid of this part here so it doesn't dry out because that's a nice piece of clay. So now, let me move this away. I want to take this piece, and I'm just going to take it so I can do these individually now. Okay. So now I'm taking this and I'm just going to form what would be the piece of crust and I'm just pressing this out to make it a little bit bigger. Okay, So I'm going to put it up onto the pie. And then I'm going to pinch it just as if you were pinching the crust when you were making the pie. Okay? Okay, 
See that? All right, I'll be back when I get the last one done, and we will, once this is dry, we'll start painting it. These turned out really good. I have a lot of ideas uh, for that silicone mold. You can do a lot with that. You see why I'm doing the crust first? Because if I get on to the actual pie itself, it's not going to matter because the color that I'm uh, doing the pie is a lot darker. So it doesn't matter. You want to get your pie down here, your crust, I mean. Make sure to get way down into the crust. You know what I mean? You don't want to see any uh, light. A little bit of my crust came off here, so it's no big deal. I'll just put it back there. I could have been I could have went a little bit thicker on the actual bottom of the pie crust, but it's not a big deal. A lot of other things to worry about in life than thin crust. And if it doesn't stay on, it doesn't stay on. That's no big deal to me. Again, this is for my use. If I was making it as a gift, it'd be a different story. But since it's for me, and really it's for the purpose of showing you as well how to do it. So as long as I can get the gist of how to make this gets across to you, then I've done my job. Okay, I'm going to finish this, and then I'll be back as soon as we start to paint the pie. All right, so let's get going now on the actual pie part. Every time I make one of these faux desserts, it always makes me want to make the real thing. <laughs> okay, and this is the Folk Art Again Burnt Umber. Now you could use a um, uh, sponge brush if you wanted, but I don't have one down. I don't have one down here, so. And I'm going to get almost to the edge, and then when I get to the edge, I'm going to use a smaller brush. I'm just using this big brush because it gets it all over quicker. But this brush is kind of funky. I've had it for a long, long time, and uh, I just don't trust it right against the, the edge. And this is what's nice about the Lazy Susan, because you can just turn the Lazy Susan. You know what I mean? And I got the Lazy Susan from uh, Hobby Lobby in the cake department. And I'm deliberately leaving kind of a thick, well, not thick, thick, but in other words, I'm not trying to paint it smooth and I left the uh, plaster of Paris kind of um, oh I don't know bumpy if you will because that really is how at least for my chocolate pies maybe they're not supposed to be but <laughs> they're not completely smooth well at least in my house they're not Like I said, the detail work I will do, the detail work I'll use a uh, smaller brush. All right, so for the detail work, I'm going to go off camera. OK, 
okay? And then I'll be back when I'm done with that and we'll start the slices. Okay, so now we have the chocolate done. Now I'm going to let it dry and then I'm going to antique it. When you antique these faux foods, a lot of them, no, I mean, you're not going to do cupcakes and stuff like that. But pies, when you antique like the crust, it just, it adds another dimension and it makes it look even more real, okay? So what I'm going to do now, like I said, I'm going to let this dry. And we're going to go on with the pie slices. Okay, so here we go with this. Again, it is the burnt umber and this is what I use with the, for the candies, the chocolate candies, as well as like chocolate frosting and obviously the pies. I'm going to use a detailed brush to get in there. I just want to give you the gist. I know you guys are busy. You have things to do, so I know you don't want to just sit and watch me do the whole thing. As long as you can get the gist of it. And this will take a couple um, coats because plaster of Paris is very porous. It's going to suck every bit of that paint in. What you could do, and had I thought of it before I started, I probably would have put some white gesso and painted the pie itself first because then it acts like a primer. And when I'm painting with the paint, the paint won't, I won't a lot of times have to do two coats, okay? So if you are going to do a lot of faux foods or you know, for, you might do some for uh, friends or, I don't know. You might want to look into a Lazy Susan. And as you notice, I have wax paper. You can use wax paper or parchment. Don't use just paper because the paper, the paint could stick to it and then come off. Use something that it can, you know, be peeled off of and the paint won't come with it. Okay, I'm going to finish and get this one done as well, and then I'll be back. So here are the two chocolate pie slices. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and uh, get the antiquing. I'm going to antique a little bit of this crust. I'll show you how I do that, and then we will put on the whipped cream. Okay, so what I'm using to antique it is the Waverly Wax. Okay, that's what I'm using, and I'm just using a paper towel, and I wet it just a little bit, and I'm almost done with the, uh, I'm just coming in here, and then you can wet it and take off as much as you want. Again, this is my own preference. Some people might like just the paint itself and like the look of it. I think when you antique it, it looks even more as far as... Uh, certain candies and uh, for pie crust I like the antiquing but you do what you want because when you make yours that's going to be your creation okay okay now we're on to the slices and again I'm just putting on this Waverly Wax antiquing and like I said this is totally your preference you do not have to do this part I personally like it, but you do you, boo, whatever you like, okay? Whatever floats your boat, you do it that way. We'll be back in a minute, and then we're going to uh, seal these. Okay, 
So now I'm just going to use the gloss that I have. And like I said, I got this years and years and years ago. You can use anything. You could even use Mod Podge. Okay. Oop. That was quite a bit, wasn't it? <laughs> but that's okay. It's all going to dry. It's all going to be good. And the milky look will go away. Just getting the crust as well. Okay, I'm going to put those down and then I'll come back and we'll do the pie. And let's see if I can pour better. Okay, so now we're going to put on our whipped cream. And for this, I'm going to want to be able to see the chocolate. If I put the whipped cream all over it, I wouldn't even have had to go to this length of painting it, right? Because you could just, you could just take some clay, make your uh, crust, put a piece of cardboard, and put a bunch of whipped cream. But if I'm trying to show that this is a chocolate pie, I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to put dollops of whipped cream around it and probably the same with my uh, slices. Again I have the open star and it's the largest you can get and this is from Wilton. Oh I always never know which way I want to go with this. Okay, I think that's all I'm going to do to that. So there is my chocolate pie, and then I'll come back and show you how I'm going to... Well, I'll show you a way that you can display it. So let's go ahead and get the slices. This one, this one I will do all the way because you can see the sides of it. Well, I should do both, shouldn't I? Okay, so there you go, and I will be back in just a minute. Okay, and I think for the slices, I'm going to use a little bit, and this is real cocoa, but there's no uh, uh, sugar in it that I know of. No, no sugar. And I'm just going to take a little bit. And sprinkle on the top. There you go. Okay. I think I'll do it here too. That even makes it look more.
Okay. Okay, guys. I ended up putting whipped cream just around against the crust and in the middle. And then I'll take still shots and at the end of the video you can see it closer. And there's our chocolate bunny that we made. Did we make that two years ago? I think we did, but I'm not sure. But I do have a video on how to make that chocolate bunny and the candies that are in her basket. And then there is another chocolate bunny we made last year. And there are the slices of chocolate pie. I think this makes a beautiful presentation for your faux food. Guys, until we get together again, remember the world's a better place because you're in it. Don't ever, ever forget that. Talk to you soon. Bye.